Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Learn GSP with Mahesh. Today we are going to see two interesting facts about CloudNAT. Let's get started. A quick shout out. Uh, so in the next 12 hours, I'm going to start my new batch, uh, batch 5 on Google Cloud Architect, a customized training. So if you are really interested, please drop me a mail, uh, which is mentioned in the slide for further information. So the two interesting facts. So to understand these two interesting facts, uh, one should know what is CloudNAT. So if for folks who have not uh, seen how Google's uh, GCP's CloudNAT works, please look into the description where I'm going to provide you the previous video which I had done on CloudNAT. So now let's get started with the actual CloudNAT. Two important interesting facts about or concepts about CloudNAT. So so for people who wanted to see uh, quickly how content looks like in the cloud nat just search in my channel cloud nat and you should be able to get uh, the first video should be mostly cloud nat it's a very short video uh, posted almost like um, a year back it gives you the concept there so now let's do understand those two interesting concepts which i wanted to share today so so this is the setup currently so if you see uh, under my external ip address i don't have anything mentioned I'm just refreshing it just to show you that there's nothing and similarly under my cloud NAT uh, I have nothing so I have not provisioned any cloud NAT let me just show you once the screen refreshes so you see nothing is there under external IP address similarly under cloud NAT you will see nothing so I've just refresh it and you should be able to see there's nothing so this is just to set the ground so because if you're doing something from scratch you should understand the concept there so all good now what we'll do is we are going to create a, a virtual machine which is going to have only uh, something like which is going to have only uh, internal IP address and this virtual machine needs to connect to internet to get any updates. So I'm going to change it uh, the region to Singapore. So Singapore should be good. Now I can leave everything default. So there's a new machine type called as E2 series. Uh, so, but if I just leave it, uh, just a side note, if I just leave this, forget it, I'm going to be charged $30. So I don't want it to be charged that much. So I'm going to switch to my N1 star generation under which I get my favorite machine type, which is F1 micro. So even if I forget to stop this virtual machine, I'm going to be charged only $5. So I can save $25 there. So small side note. Now that's it. Scroll down and come to your networking under networking what we need to do is we need to turn off our external IP address so that's the whole concept where you should not have external IP address but you have to use NAT so basically to uh, have any outbound uh, connection so inbound connection would be uh, blocked only outbound would be implemented so let me make it as none all good so everything remaining would be the same thing so default VPC no external IP address that's the thing click on create and should take less than 30 seconds for our virtual machine to be up and running and that too since it's not having an external IP address um, so it should be much quicker is what I would say so let's wait for a yes we have it and you see this it's external IP addresses none and currently I'm using this ID which is uh, having a owner access since I'm having owner access, I should be able to log into this virtual machine or SSH into this virtual machine uh, without an external IP address. The reason is behind the scene, cloud IPA, identity aware proxy is running. Again, I'm going to put this link in the description if you wanted to refer to what is cloud IPA. So let's wait for the machine to SS uh, for our account to get transferred, the SSH keys to be transferred. Then we should be able to uh, see how the NAT is going to work. Basically, since it's not having an external IP address, I cannot do anything. I cannot do an update. I cannot install a software of my choice. Everything would be blocked. So for that, we are going to fix it using Cloud NAT, which is a very uh, efficient way uh, because uh, as most of us know, from uh, June 2020, uh, external IP address is going to be a cost. So now we have logged into the system. If I just do let me just do this uh, command so that I can get the complete real estate. Good. Now, if I do sudo apt hyphen update, you see it stops there. It just stops there trying to connect. It cannot do. The reason is very simple. It's not going to have an external IP address. So done. Similarly, if I do ping google.com, you will see 
I'll not be able to ping it. It's all because it's having an internal IP address. This is the uh, concept of CloudNAT in a nutshell. Now, what we'll do is, I can just leave this to just to show you that the moment I provision my NAT, the ping will work. So we'll go and provision our NAT. So this is somewhat similar to what we had done a year back. Uh, but two interesting facts which I wanted to show is what I'm going to do that once I finish creating the NAT. So click on get started under our cloud NAT and let's provision a, a simple NAT and open to the entire VPC. So the, the VPC which we are using is default VPC. So cloud NAT two concepts. All right. Uh, default VPC should be good enough and we know CloudNAT is regional so I have to select the specific region so my virtual machine is in uh, Singapore I'm going to choose Singapore and I need to create a router cloud router uh, so cloud router CR click create that's it I don't want to put any further restriction I'm going to leave uh, NAT applied for primary and secondary uh, ranges that should be good let me click create so when I click on create the NAT should get provisioned. So it's going to provision and the most important thing which I wanted to show is, so based on the previous video, if you have seen, uh, the moment the NAT gets provisioned, behind the scene it's getting provisioned. Once it gets provisioned, the ping will start working. I should be able to connect to internet, do everything as a normal stuff. Uh, that's the first thing. So that is a known thing. So we should be able to see the ping working in a couple of seconds or so. Let me just leave the screen as this. Uh, this is what we had done in our previous video. Now the ping is working all good. Now if I do the previous command, it will also update the system. So that's all good. This is all good. But the fact which I wanted to share is just close this. We don't need this anymore. If I go to my external IP address and refresh it, that's the beauty where you're going to see the two interesting facts. So the first fact is you will have a external IP address provision. So for network Greeks, this would be a very basic information, but for people learning networking in GCP, right? This would be really important. So you see a external IP address. So this is like a shared IP address using which the VMs in Singapore region will be able to communicate to the external world. So this is the thing. Now, for an example, and uh, the advantage of this external IP address is simple. Assume uh, this virtual machine which we have needs to contact MongoDB Atlas or Mongo, MongoDB Atlas uh, and uh, connect something from that uh, database. So you need to have a white listing. So currently if you see this does not have any external IP address. It's having an internal IP address. I cannot use this internal IP address to whitelist it. So in my MongoDB or uh, MongoDB Atlas or Mongo Atlas, whatever you want to call, there I have to whitelist this IP address. So this is where I need to whitelist it. So that's the first important thing. So whenever you're working with cloud NAT and uh, the customer or whoever says, give me the IP address which I need to whitelist so that I can open the uh, communication. You have to go to your external VPC, click on your VPC. So under VPC, you will have external IP address when you click this is where you will come to know and the name would be always NAT hyphen auto IP followed by a specific number. So this is how it's going to be. So please use this effectively when you want to whitelist certain stuffs. This is the first uh, interesting concept which I wanted to share. The next one is the coolest one. I really liked it. The thing is just you know there's a external IP address already provisioned. This is your NAT. Now what I will do is Currently, my requirement is I don't want to have any virtual machine in Singapore. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete it. The moment I delete it, what happens is the external IP address will be totally removed. So that way your cost is automatically reduced. This is a very cool feature. So let's wait for the instance to be completely deleted. I'm not pausing the video just to show you the complete thing in live. So I'm just refreshing it. It's getting deleted. Once it deletes, right, we'll go to our external IP address screen. Yes, deleted. Now, if I refresh it, you will see this entry will be removed, meaning you are not charged for your external IP address. That's the beauty. Done. Only thing which you have is your cloud NAT stuff running. Now, let me just go back and create a virtual machine back in Singapore. 
with internal IP address, you should see another external IP address would be provisioned. So this, I would call it like something like more like serverless, but uh, may not be the appropriate word, but it is more like that on demand. Only if there's no resources, uh, no VMs, right? Which is going to use this NAT, you, why should you have an external IP address? That's the beauty there. So let me just do one last time to just to make sure that everything is based on the VM. If there's no VM, no external IP address needs to be reserved. That's the beauty of it. So let me make, uh, yeah, let me go to my networking. And if you just leave it as external IP address, there's no fun. The NAT comes into picture only when you have an X, uh, when you don't have an external IP address. Now, if somebody has a doubt, okay, what if I just leave external IP address? So it's of no use there. So it's not serving the, the purpose is defeated. So let's just do that. Click quickly. And we know that in 30 seconds, the VM should be created. And at the same time, we should also have an external IP address once I refresh it. So once I get this VM up and running, yes, it's there. Now let me just refresh it. And I'm not going to pause this just to show you that the moment uh, it comes up, you should have an entry and the entry would be always with the name NAT-auto-IP, something of that sort, just to indicate that it is an, a one which has been provisioned. So this is the one and by default, it is always static. So you can easily give this IP address to any uh, third party systems where they need to whitelist uh, the IP so that your VM can communicate with that third party system. So those were the two interesting facts which I wanted to share about CloudNAT. The second one is one of my best feature uh, or best con uh, uh, concept which I learned when I was doing something on CloudNAT. Please let me know in the comment section which of the two one was really interesting for you. Thank you for watching.